Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today we are going to be talking about the all new Leatherman Bond. Now, when these initially were leaked a while back, I was pretty excited about these for our friends in Europe who will have to deal with these ultra stringent knife laws. Now, for us here in America, these new multi tools, the new Bond and the soon to be released Leatherman Curl, don't really do anything for us that we don't get in other multi tools. But you need to take a step back because these are not built for us, they are built for our friends in Europe. Now, having seen the initial design concepts or the elite photos of these, I was pretty happy about this for the fact that it was going to give our friends in Europe more options or at least some options for a legal carry multi-tool. But once I got the Leatherman Bond and I really started getting into it, I want to say that the level of engineering behind this multi-tool is on a different level. I was pretty tough on the Leatherman engineering team a couple of years ago with the release of the Leatherman Free P2 and Free P4. Uh, I still think that magnets and multi-tool are just an absolutely awful idea. I understood what they were trying to accomplish. I just did not like the way they were trying to accomplish it. They were trying to go for that all one-handed use, uh, accessibility stuff. And I, I get that. I get that. I get that why that's convenient. I just think that they should have approached it differently. And I just still to this day, and no one's ever going to change my mind. Magnets in a multi-tool are a terrible idea. Now, having said that, the Leatherman Bond implements some of those ideas into a multi-tool, but they do it without magnets. And we're going to talk more about that here in just a little bit. I want to say to the Leatherman engineering team behind the Leatherman Bond, and hopefully we see similar aspects or similar characteristics in the new and upcoming Leatherman Curl, you guys need to stand up and take a bow because you did an absolutely bang up job with this multi-tool. Let's get into the Leatherman Bond. So before we jump into the specs of this real quick, I want to say that the pocket clip that's on here actually does not come with this multi-tool from the factory. You have to purchase this one separately. I took mine off my Leatherman Free P4 to install it to show you guys uh, the kind of type of carry that you'll get out of here. It doesn't come all the way to the top, but it is a fairly deep carry on this multi-tool and uh, it, it carries quite well. Now the weight on this is actually really good for a pocket carry tool as well. It comes in at 5.74 ounces or 162 grams. This is going to be in a four inch frame size or 101 millimeters. It's going to be an inch and an eighth wide or 28.5 millimeters. And the widest point is actually not out here on the edge. It's actually in the middle. And that comes in at right at three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters. So it's a pretty compact tool. And it's going to really harken back to the way I see this tool is like a 21st century PST. Uh, it really takes some, a lot of its cues. Most of the tool set is identical to what the PST was originally. So let's get into that tool set. So the first thing we want to take note of is on the outer portion of the frame, you have your metric and SAE ruler. So it's going to go to uh, eight inches or 19 and a half centimeters. And we already talked about the pocket clip on here. Now on these tools, on the Leatherman Bond, none of the tools are locking. They all have a slip lock, but the slip lock on this tool is the absolute best slip lock, slip joint that I've ever seen in a plier based multi-tool that I can ever remember. This thing is really, really strong. So let's get it opened up. And the first thing we're gonna notice is in the pliers. So it's gonna come with your needle nose, regular pliers, wire cutters, hard wire cutters. Does not have the wire crimper on the back. So this is gonna be the same pliers that were used in the generation two Leatherman Wave and Leatherman Charge series of tools. And this is more so to keep costs down. Uh, I would have liked to see a version that came out with the replaceable hardwire cutters, uh, wire cutters and hardwire cutters. But I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep the price as low as possible on this one and provide a budget multi-tool. And I get that. And so I I'm okay with that. And actually there's nothing wrong with the Gen 2 Wave and Charge series of pliers. I actually, in some ways, kind of prefer them 
over the third generation. Now, when it comes to larger tools like the Surge and the Super Tool 300, I don't feel the same way. Uh, but when it comes to the Wave Charge Series, I actually kind of think I like the second generation a little bit more most of the time. Okay, so let's get into the tool set. First thing we want to look at is the knife blade. So the knife blade on here is going to be 420HC. It's going to have the overall blade length on this is going to be two and three eighths of an inch. So this is going to fall underneath that three inch, uh, that three inch uh, threshold for what is legal to carry in most European countries. I know from from country to country the knife laws vary, uh, but I think one of the more strict ones is the fact that you cannot you, you cannot be able to open up the knife one-handed it has to fall underneath three inches in an overall length and it cannot be locking which this one covers all of those bases so the knife blade on here again is just going to have one with the single knife blade it's going to have a single uh, a, a straight edge blade uh, 428c so nothing particularly special about the knife blade other than the fact that it falls within the parameters of those knife laws now, the lock mechanism on here is built a little bit differently. And we're going to take a little closer look at this in just a little bit. But the retention on here is really, really quite solid. It takes quite a bit of force to knock that over. Uh, it's just a really, really well done. Okay, so let's close the knife blade up. The next thing we have is the combination tool, which is going to include your bottle cap lifter, can opener, and wire stripper. This is what was common on tools of this frame size from Leatherman these days. One thing that a lot of people are gonna be happy about is the fact that it includes the truss screwdriver instead of the bit exchanger, uh, which I'm okay with. I like this screwdriver quite a bit, and I know quite a bit of people that actually like to have this instead of the bit exchanger. Now, you still can add extra bits to this with the adapter kit that is still made. So you can slip that over there and then you can use Leatherman's proprietary bits to increase your capabilities if you so choose to. So you still have the option to get more capability out of this tool with some accessories. So we'll fold that over and we'll slip to the other side. Now the long tool on this side is going to be the file and you'll notice also that the lanyard ring came out with this one. So this is the same file that you're going to get on the Leatherman rebar. It's one of the most aggressive files on Leatherman multi-tools. It's actually a very good file. Now, I am very partial to the diamond coated file that Leatherman puts on a lot of their multi-tools. So I wish uh, that this could have a diamond file, but again, it's gonna come back to that. They're trying to uh, keep the cost down. Now, I think with the Leatherman curl, if it has a file, and I can't remember if it, it's going to or not, will more than likely come out with the same file that you find in the Leatherman Wave, and it will have the diamond file if that's the case. So again, the next tool or the next uh, feature to this is a linear ring that uh, sits right beside that file. Now the next tools, let's just go ahead and fan them out here. So we've got your quarter inch driver, which is also gonna double as a light duty pry tool. It's gonna to come with the medium flat uh, screwdriver. And then one thing that this is gonna have over some of the other tools uh, is that it's going to have a really well-constructed awl. Uh, this is the same awl that, well, it's not exactly the same, but the, the awl itself is exactly the same as, the, uh, as what you find in the uh, Leatherman rebar. I don't know that the catch mechanism is identical. And we're going to get to that here in just a second. So that really sums out the tool set to this. It's a pretty simple tool. Uh, it doesn't have, again, it, for Americans, it's not going to offer you anything that you can't get in another multi-tool, namely, in this case, the Leatherman rebar. Now, let's get into some of the really interesting engineering behind this multi-tool and why I think that Leatherman the Leatherman engineering team really deserves a hand for this one. So to help highlight this, I brought in the Leatherman Free P4. Now, one of the things that you'll notice about the Leatherman Bond is that the tools all come out really super easy. 
One thing to note as well that on most of the tools, there's no nail nicks. So you get a nail nick on the combination tool, you get the nicks on the top side for these tools, you get it on the knife blade. But when we come over here to these three tools, you'll notice that there isn't a nail nick to be found on any of these tools. So how do you get them out? Well, it's the way they're designed. So the reason I brought the free P4 in here is because when they designed these, the idea was that you could flip the inner tools out like so, be able to fan them out and choose exactly what you're looking for instead of having to dig tools out. A lot of complaints about people saying that, uh, you know, they're fingernail breakers. So there's a lot easier to pull these out, fan them out, figure out exactly what you want, and then put the rest back. And they accomplish that by all of the inner tools, none of them are in contact with the lock mechanism when they're in their closed position. They don't hit contact with that lock mechanism until they reach somewhere in about right there. So a little over 45 degrees out is when they will finally come in contact with the lock mechanism down here to give them a little bit of tension. Now the way they hold them down is obviously that magnet holds them relatively tightly in there. Still think magnets, not a good idea. Now, they do similar a similar thing with the Leatherman Bond. So I'm gonna to try to focus in a little bit. If you can see here, none of these tools in their closed position are in contact with the slip lock mechanism. They are all free of the slip lock. In fact, they have some flats ground into the back of them that keeps them just off of that slip lock until they reach right here. So now we look at it, now we can see that all the tools are in contact with the slip lock, which gives them their tension. So the idea behind this is to very easily be able to lift these out of here, decide what tool you want, and then put the rest back. So it's basically taking some of the design or the idea behind the free series, the P2 and the P4, and implementing it into a standardized multi-tool without the use of magnets. That it was they have done a very very good job with this a lot of people will see this as a fault because the tools seem to be like they flop out i'm okay with this because when you're using this tool and you've got it in the open position one of two things you're either looking for the tool that you're going to be using or you're using the pliers and so those tools being able to flop out or, or come out like that slightly should not affect you 98 percent of the time 99 even the only mistake that I have found in the Leatherman Bond is that now you'll notice that on the knife blade, they left a little bit extra meat down here, a little bit extra steel that is supposed to come in contact early with that slip lock mechanism. The fact of the matter is, though, you can lift it out to this point before it hits contact. This is what I don't like about this. I think that they should redesign the backstop on this just slightly, leave a little bit more material so that this one is in contact at all times. So the knife blade is constantly in contact so you don't get this little bit of movement because I don't like the fact that that can slip out just slightly for whatever reason, you could slip your hand down there and accidentally stab yourself. I think this is the only mistake I've seen though. The only mistake I've seen in this multi-tool. So apart from that, this lock mechanism is incredibly, incredibly good. So let me bring in the uh, PST now and show you how they accomplish this ultra strong lock with this slip joint. Okay, so we're looking at the PST on the left and we're looking at the bond on the right. And you'll notice that these are really similar tool sets. In fact, they're just almost identical, but the engineering in the bond is a lot more advanced. Now you'll notice, let's look a little closer at that lock mechanism. So the lock mechanism on here is just basically cut uh, out of the frame and then they just bend this over to the square position. And so it's just a flat lock. So when you open up any number of tools in here, the lock back on here, while decently strong, is not as strong as what you're gonna find on the Leatherman Bond. Now, with the Leatherman Bond, they took out a little extra material. One of the things they did, and it comes back to that, usually these tools are about an inch wide. 
they made the bond a little wider at an inch and an eighth. And the reason they did that was to be able to get the tools in there, but also implement this type of lock where they have this extra break. So you'll notice that the lock mechanism bends down before it curl or, or uh, it straightens back out. By adding this break in there, they have increased the strength of this slip lock considerably, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 60% stronger than what you would have found on the Leatherman uh, PST. So that is another, uh, this is really, I mean, they have done a really nice job with this multi-tool, more so than I anticipated with this tool. Another thing that they've done, and for this, I need to bring in the Leatherman rebar. Okay, so another thing that they've done is that on the frame itself, it looks pretty similar to what you'll find in the Leatherman rebar. However, it is a little bit different. They have, by kind of pyramiding this out a little bit, making it wider on the inside edge here as opposed to the outside edge, what they've done, instead of having a 90 degree break, is they've given themselves a little bit more room to get a little bit tighter break on the edge here. So this is, this is gonna be a little difficult to see. In the rebar, it comes to about somewhere in the neighborhood of about a 70 degree break that really curls that edge over and makes it a lot better than what you found in the original PST, PST2 stuff, tools of that nature, where they just had the straight edges. And they were really tough on the hands because they created a lot of hot spots with that edge sticking out like that. Now with the rebar, they try to eliminate, and they did for the vast majority. They, they curled this over, they gave them, it's a lot more comfortable to use. Now on the bond, however, what they've done is they've, by holding that out a little further, now they put a true 90 degree break on that edge. And so instead of your fingers kind of, uh, the, the meat of your hand, pinching into that edge, that broke edge out here on the end. It is folded down even further than what they do on the Leatherman rebar. And so this thing is ultra comfortable, especially considering the fact that it is an open frame design like this. I mean, this the, the bond is easily more comfortable to handle uh, the pliers when you're really bearing down on them as opposed to the rebar. Now, is it free of hot spots? Not entirely. You still feel them slightly, but the improvement on this is just, it is a, a very, it is a step above what even the rebar is. So I brought in the Leatherman PST because I wanted to show you uh, a, a comparison against the Leatherman Bond and why I consider this one to be basically the 21st century PST because their, their tool sets are really similar to one another. So first of all, the knife blades, which are both 428C, uh, and they're pretty similar in size and construction. Then we get to the combination tool, which is drastically improved in the bond and also includes the wire stripper, which the original did not have. It's also built a little bit beefier, a little stronger. When it comes to the truss screwdriver, it is definitely, definitely better than what the original was. It's gonna give you more reach, it's just stronger overall. And it's going to accept the adapter to increase your capabilities. The all, on the bond is drastically improved over what the original PST was. And the medium and large screwdrivers are pretty well on par with one another, except for the medium screwdriver on the bond is gonna give you quite a bit more reach than what the original PST did. The files, the bond has a more aggressive file, though the PST has this fine file that I, I kinda like, and it has a little longer length to it as well. The only tool that comes on the PST that is not on the bond is gonna be this little smaller micro driver. And then they both have uh, the lanyard ring. Well, actually, I take that back. The lanyard ring on the PST was actually integrated uh, up here, where in the bond, they have uh, the smaller, uh, or they, they utilize one slot for that. Now, could they have added a little micro driver like this? Yeah, they could have. Uh, I could think of any number of tools that I would have liked to have seen in its place. I would just prefer to eliminate the lanyard ring altogether, but I know there are some people that like them too. So let me close these up real quick and then we'll take a, we'll flip them around. We'll look more at the pliers themselves. And you'll notice obviously that the pliers on the PST, a lot thinner in profile 
than what they were on the second generation Wave and Charge Series and now the Leatherman Bond. So overall, while while it has a little bit bigger footprint, both in width and in depth, this is going to be a much, much improved version of the PST. And what I am considering the PST for the 21st century. Now, I've already seen posts where people have said that Leatherman is taking a step back with these tools, that they think that the free P4 and P2 were innovations and that Leatherman is really just stuck in the mud with this Bond and soon-to-be-released Curl. That couldn't be further from the truth. Couldn't be further from the truth. In my estimation, the PST, and the, or excuse me, the, uh, the P4 and the P2 were in some ways... A step back because they they took away a lot of the usefulness of a multi-tool namely a larger file uh in in cases like the the saw they just the wave just performs better than the p4 does now the p2 doesn't have that saw but my point is in some aspects or in some ways the the free series actually took a step back i understand they were trying to innovate and they did innovate i'm not saying that they didn't they did innovate I just hate the implementation in the free series of tools. However, when you look at the Leatherman Bond on a whole and what the engineering team behind Leatherman actually created here, it, it's the nuanced differences. They really are. You really have to look for them. But they did an absolutely outstanding job engineering this tool to making it a very, well, first of all, budget-friendly useful multi-tool that does not incorporate magnets but does have a lot of usefulness and most importantly it gets underneath those stringent knife laws that we our friends in europe have this is an absolute out of the park winner leatherman is to be commended for this bond i didn't think i was going to be ex this excited about it but i love engineering behind multi-tools i love engineering behind a number of different things but that's especially why i'm drawn to multi-tools in particular because i love the engineering that goes into these things and i just can't say it enough leatherman you guys did a bang up job with this one and we really appreciate it my name is ben you've been watching the texas tool crib i appreciate you watching and i'll see you in the next one